Hello, hi Facebook, hi LinkedIn, hi Twitter, um, all the pages and everything. Hi, my staff, Inkpreneurs. Um, welcome. It's Wednesday. Let me take my glasses off. It's Wednesday. It's Q and A day. It's Q and A day. It's Q and A day. Ah! How's everybody doing? Hey guys, for everybody, I have been online all week long. I'm surprised y'all have not kicked me off yet and said, D, leave us alone. I'm going to try to move this camera over here so we can get a view and I can look like at least that I'm talking to both sides. Hi guys. This is, um, this is my favorite day of the week because it's Q&A day and we literally get to talk about all the successes that we have experienced in our niche recruitment and staffing agency business. If is businesses, if you're starting your very own niche recruitment and staffing agency business, you are in the right place. So thank you so much. Don't worry, Kendall, you don't need to have a camera on your computer as long as you are here and have the ability to ask questions and share your success. I just want to do a really quick, people are logging in as we speak like crazy. That We are viewing live on Facebook in five different groups on five different Facebook pages. So hi, Twitter is on the line with us live. Hey, Twitter. LinkedIn is on the line with us live. Hey, LinkedIn. Okay. And my staffingpreneurs are here on GoToMeeting with us. I love you guys so much. And I just want to give a couple of shout outs to people who I see on the line so far. Hey, Harold, it's good to see you. I've got my girl Constance. Hey, Constance. Tanisha Daniels. Happy hump day. Hey, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate the compliments. Ryan is always complimenting me, guys. I'm telling you, I'm blushing sometimes. We've got Aaron on the line. Hey, Aaron. Latasha and Latasha. I think we've got like five different Latashas. Hey, Latasha Sly. I will see you in Dallas, Texas. Woo! Latasha Sly is coming to Dallas, Texas for the live boot camp. Cannot wait to see you there. If you guys don't know, we have a live boot camp going down, going down the last week in July. It's going to be absolutely bonkers. This will be the largest live boot camp that we've ever had. She's like, yeah. Um, so we got Pam on the line. Hey, Pam. Pam is about to just shut this industry down. Y'all better watch. She got fire coming out from under her. I look forward to seeing her success. Kendall, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Uh, we've got Ryan. We've got Tamika. We've got Trudy, who's one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. Hey, Trudy. And the people are still logging in and they're looking. We've got people, 12 people. Hey, Bernard. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So we've got people everywhere online chiming in, ready to talk about niche recruitment and staffing. Let me just tell you one of my favorite topics in the whole wide world. So y'all know my energy is like super duper 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 high. <laughs> I love it. Hey, Ash, it's so good to see you for the second time today. So listen, if you guys are on, hey, Olivia, how are you doing? Hey, Sean. So listen, if you're on my go-to meeting, please put your comments in the comment box. If you think I'm crazy, tell me. If you think I'm not, I don't have enough energy, tell me. If you're excited, tell me. We want to hear your questions. Add them in the Q&A box. We want to hear your uh, praise reports of what's exciting. Any challenges that you're experiencing, we want to know about it. If you, hey, Stephanie, if you're live here with us on Facebook and you've got to, you want to talk about great things that are going on in your niche recruitment and staffing agency business, please put in the comments section. Section, please put your comments there. This is your Q&A call. It is designed specifically for you to help you gain a under, better understanding about the business and to be able to grow your business in the best way possible. That is my goal and my desire is to make sure you understand this business, how it works, and to excel. Hey, Sasha. It's so good to see you. All right. So we're ready. Hey, Ida. Oh, man. Ida's on the call. It's so good to see you as well, Ida. Thanks for being here. So I want to dive in really good today. Typically, I read some articles, but I'm actually traveling this week. And in addition, we've actually had a ton of questions that have come through um, online and 
um, and, and in the Facebook group as well as in my email. So for our folks that are on Facebook, if you are not on this go-to meeting webinar um, and you are not a member of Staffingpreneurs Academy, um, that means that you don't have access to the private members only Facebook group, which is where we typically put our questions at, where we typically put our questions. So um, just to let you know, if you're in the Six Figure Staffing group, um, if you haven't joined Staffingpreneurs Academy, join the Six Figure Staffing. If you are a part of Staffingpreneurs Academy and you try to join Six Figure Staffing, we will ignore you because that is just for newbies. You guys already are, have the cream of the crop here. So I just wanted to let you know. So I'm going to start off with some of the questions that I got via um, via the Facebook group. Again, feel free to put your questions in the box um, and I'm going to answer as many as I can and as much as I can. We're here until 8.30 if you need it. If you don't need it, then we'll end early. My goal here is literally just to support you in the growth of your, your businesses. And um, so I, I, I'm just saying, I got to let's get started. So, I, you know, Trudy always... Um, it was a Trudy that sent the first uh, message. Da, 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 da. Hold on. Oh, Sharon. Okay, so hold on. So I'm going to close this for a second. And um, so that I can see things properly. I'm not really sure how to work this thing. So we'll, we'll see how that flows um, here. Okay, so uh, da, 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 da. Sharon left a message on the Facebook group today. She says, four ways to jumpstart your client lead search. In this section, she's talking about in the academy. This is one of the videos that are posted within the academy to help you grow your business. In this section video, uh, you talked about getting reference checks. I used to work for an HR company where it was the company's policy where hiring managers could not give out references. If they got a call from a recruiter for this, the policy was that they transfer the call to, to the HR department to answer general questions. One of the questions was, was, would you rehire this person? This question pretty much summed up what kind of employee this person was. I was planning on using a reference check company to do my checks. I know that the reference check company explains how to handle bad references and if I remember correctly I would have to tell the candidate if these references were not good and they could provide another reference. I would appreciate some input on this topic. This is actually an excellent question and there's so many different ways that I want to answer this question Sharon I don't know if you're actually on this call or if you're going to be watching the let me just look and see if I see Sharon I don't see her on there if you're watching the video live but um, let me answer this question for you so having a reference check company is more than fine however I don't agree with it and I'm going to tell you why I don't agree with it before you say what D that sounds ridiculous Think about this from a larger perspective. If a reference check company is checking your references, who's talking to the hiring manager? Okay, who's talking to the hiring manager? Isn't it one of your goals to develop new business? Isn't it one of your goals to, to conduct business development on a consistent basis? So if someone else is doing the reference checks for you, how do you establish a new relationship with a potential hiring manager who has the hiring authority to, um, you know, to, to give you more positions, right? We're not looking to, to connect with HR in most instances. We're looking to connect with the hiring managers. So I personally would not outsource the reference check. I would do each and every one of my reference checks because this gives me an opportunity to build a relationship with a new, excuse me, with a new hiring manager and to land a new job order. Okay. So that's the, the first thing. Hey, Lori Jones. I love to see your face there. Hey, Ida. So that's kind of one of the first directions that, um, that I want to go in to start that, that off with um with that yes that's right olivia this is a relationship building business no if ands or buts about it that's fine okay um the second piece of that is i would be very careful about um uh, you're right there is definitely a um uh, you know you have to be very careful i think the best word 
when you are telling candidates that they got a bad reference. There are a lot, hey Shalonda, there are a lot of new laws around this reference check thing. And so you definitely want to talk to your HR consultant to make sure that you're staying within the guidelines. I'm going to tell you in the past, I typically, if there's a bad reference, I don't typically say, hey, your hiring manager gave you a bad reference. What I'll do is just go back and ask for an additional reference. Hey, I wasn't really too happy with all the references that you had. Or I may say, hey, you got another reference you can refer me to um, because it's just a thin line. It's, it's the only way I can explain it. I have, and you've heard me talk about this, many of you. Uh, I've had an instance where I told a candidate that the hiring manager gave a bad reference and he actually threatened to sue. And, you know, so it, it's just a thin line. So I just don't say that they left a bad reference. I just say, do you have another, hey, Therese, do you have another reference that I can um, get? And then I would go there, go from there. Um, do, 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 let's see if this is the kind of references were that good. Probably not another reference. Um, good question always is, would you rehire this person? If they say yes, you know you got a good candidate. If they say no or uh, then you know mm, you may not. And this, this is the thing. If a hiring manager tells you that they would not hire a candidate again, like, You've got to kind of sit back and start asking some additional questions. It's not just cool to just go in and to just like, hey, Antonio, hey, Chico. It's not just cool to go in and say, okay, well, I, I don't, you know, let me just go and get another reference. Like, why would they not hire that candidate again? So I would kind of start digging in to see if maybe there is something about this candidate that you, we don't know about, that they haven't told. Do we really want to submit them? If a hiring manager is saying, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I hate Jay, if a hiring manager is saying that I would not rehire them, that's a flag in my opinion. Now, on the flip side of that, you've got to pay attention. I, that's why I said I would ask additional questions because maybe they just had a crappy relationship. You know, we have a lot of racism and discrimination going on and it's very heightened right now. So maybe that could be an issue. Maybe um, that person is out to sabotage. The hiring manager is out to sabotage that person. That could be an issue. Or maybe the candidate is just a crappy freaking candidate. We really don't know until we ask the right questions. So we have to ask the right questions to find out why they would not rehire that person, not just kind of go in. Well, Sasha, you, you're really, you're not supposed to dive in but on the actual termination. But let me just tell you this. There's always a way to ask a question without breaking the law. Okay, so, you know, you can imply or you can basically imply, oh, well, they, you know, they weren't a great hire. Wow, that's pretty crappy. I see that a lot and blah, blah, blah. And sometimes those hiring managers will really just start talking. They don't know the HR laws. Okay, you're not talking to HR typically when you're getting that reference. You're talking to the hiring manager. And I'm not saying that you're taking advantage of them, but you definitely want to get as much information as you can to decide whether or not this is somebody you want to submit to your client. Because remember, if it's a direct hire position, you're going to have to pay that fee back or replace them if they don't, you know, if they don't make it. So it's you got to be careful. It's a thin line. Um, Ryan says, can you ask for only good ones? Well, Ryan, that the interesting part of that is, so you're talking to a, a candidate and say, hey, only send me your good references. That implies that they may typically have bad references. Um, and that, you know, you know, again, you really want to be careful about the people that you're hiring, you know, into these companies. So I ask for a hiring manager reference and I leave it like that. And, um, and then I see what I get. Um, Aaron says, so what you're saying is don't be afraid to ask questions. In this world, you should never be afraid to ask questions. Um, but be careful about the types of questions that you ask. So again, there's a way to kind of tiptoe around it, but still get that person to give you the information that you're looking for. Um, hey, Sheena. Um, hey, Sh uh, Shalonda. Um, let's see. Uh, Lynette says, I thought they weren't supposed to go into detail about why they wouldn't rehire. I was always told they can only verify employment dates and if they're eligible for rehire. Again, you get more of that in HR. But if you're talking to the hiring manager, a lot of times they do not know that law. 
So if you just take it out, just ask the question just to say, oh, really? That's insane. You know, I see that happen quite a lot. I can't imagine what you went through with that client, with that candidate. I just opened the door for him to start venting if he thought that that was a bad candidate. Yes, because he did this and he did that. So I, I kind of want to push a little bit just so I can see if this is somebody that I want to be with without breaking the law. She said, got you. Now, there's a ton of questions that are coming through here. So I want to answer some of them. Um, I see here uh, that Olivia, Olivia says, I have a follow up question. If you're doing a back channel reference or really any reference, do you give your clients the info of the person that used the reference and their details? Once I do a, a reference check and it's an excellent reference, I have no problem with adding the references there. You don't have to give them the references name and number, but you can say hiring manager at such and such company and this was the reference that was given. That was an excellent question, Olivia. Yes, you can definitely do that. Um, Let's see, Sasha says, okay, she's, yes, yeah, she said that. Um, um, Olivia says, if we hire them, what can we do to help them succeed in our organization? If you hire them as a contract or contract to hire employee, or if you hire them, um, or if the client is hiring them, can you expound on that question a little bit more so that I can have a better understanding of what that was? Okay, good. All right, awesome. All right, so that was a really good question, Sharon. We really appreciate you asking that question and we hope that, hey, Sharon, there she is. Um, and this replay will, oh, I didn't record, guys. The replay is, will be in the Academy because it's live on here. <laughs> I didn't push the record button. So, um, but it is, it's on here so you can catch the, the back end on that as well. I hope that was helpful. Hey, Tayana, I love to see your name pop up here. Hey, Renasha, happy birthday. Everybody, happy birthday to Renasha. He's got a birthday coming up. I think it's today, maybe, or this week. Happy birthday. Oh, okay, Olivia said that's her suggestion to ask for the reference. I like that. So let's go back. She says, um, the reference is, if we hire them, what can we do to help them succeed in our organization? That's a great question because then they'll go on and start to expound on like what they did wrong and what they could do better. So I love that, Olivia. She's Olivia's sharp. Y'all better watch out for her right there. She's a sharp young lady. I love working with her. Okay. Uh, questions. Okay, I just want to make sure I get Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> so we forgive you. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, so that was one of the questions that came in. And let me just keep the questions coming. And yeah, they will tell it. Um, Tina says, trainings immediately is important. Immediate need, immediately need training. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> okay, hold on one second. I got stuff going on all in, so y'all bear with me. All right, so um, we had another question. Before we get into our praise reports and all the great things that are going on, um, I want to just get some of the questions out there. Um, I hope you guys had an opportunity to catch the earlier training. I did a pop-up training today at 4 o'clock, which was freaking awesome. Now, I was just on a call with one of my clients, my one-on-ones, and one of the candidates actually called back. So he had an opportunity to listen to me complete the train, um, the actual call. And I'll just tell you that um, I wasn't too happy with the candidate that called back. His momentum was very low. Is that the type of momentum that he's going to give my client during the interview? If I can feel his energy, my client is definitely going to feel his energy. Also, um, he stated that he's currently in a part-time position as an HR manager. I asked him why he decided to go part-time versus full-time. He said the market is pretty crappy in in the Seattle space for HR that is pretty aggressive in the tech space. I don't know that to be 100% true. So we scheduled an appointment for tomorrow. I'm getting an updated copy of his resume. It is a flag for hiring managers if a candidate is not currently working for a reason of, you know, for specific reasons. Let me say it that way. So if he's saying I'm only working, he said I'm only working part time because that's all I could get. That was just a flag to me because if you're an exceptional HR manager, you really typically don't have a hard time finding a job. So um, we'll see tomorrow on how he goes. Hey, Jackie, I'm so glad to see you. Hey, Lynette, glad to see you here. I'm just kind of making sure I'm chiming everyone in here. So I, I appreciate your attendance here. Okay. 
Uh, let's just see. Da -da 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 -da. We had some more really, really good questions, and I want to make sure that I get those. Some of the questions that we have set up for some of the new boot camp, um, some of the live classes that we are doing, um, we really don't need to do a full class for. I can kind of answer those here at the um, here during the Q and A call. So I'm going to chime in with some of those. Again, feel free to put your questions in the inbox. Um, Someone asked how to move to the next level. Okay, so I do think we need a full training class on how to move to the next level for folks that are making 200K or 500K or more. There is a system and a method to taking your business to a whole different level. So I definitely will include a live training for that. And we can thank Lori, Lori S., um, for actually bringing um, bringing that up, so I'm really excited to um, to see that there. Um, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Let's see. When do you hire for your own team? I think this is an excellent question. Hey, Angela, when do you hire for your own team? So if you're in this business, I what I'll say is this: your budget depends on when you hire for your own team. I think it's very important to understand how the business works and for you to get into the business so that as you hire people, you can direct them unless you want me to train them, right? Um, but you really want to know how to work your business. So I always say you should get into that um, immediately. However, I think it's a great idea to bring sourcers on immediately because you want somebody to kind of assist you with getting the resumes into the system and doing preliminary screening calls, there is nothing wrong with that. Uh, typically, staffingpreneurs wait until they make at least one direct hire placement or they have a one full 30, uh, 30 uh, day cycle of payment on the contract or the contract to hire side before they bring in additional staff. That's totally up to you. It depends on you and your budget. So you've got to determine what makes sense for you. But if I was you, if you can afford to hire someone um, now, that'll be great. Now, I am all about keeping our money here in this United States of America. As you guys know, I'm not, I don't hide anything. You see me post late, lately, support a black owned business, right? Um, so I'm all about that. But when you're a one man firm and you're just starting on a budget, sometimes you've got to outsource overseas. I'm just keeping it real for you. And I'll tell you that the Philippines is a great place for you to outsource. You can get amazing talent and for, and you can really, you, you can do it on a really small budget. Okay. Um, really you could build a team out there if you decided to do so. So, um, I would consider that also you can look at college kids. I would not do an internship program because the intern laws are, um, are really, they have gotten very, very strict these last couple of years. So um, if you're going to do an intern internship, it would be paid or unless you're able to work with them one on one. And um, and then you, you know, and then you're giving them credit. You know, you're, I apologize, guys. They can get a portion of the commission. OK, so um, so they're still being paid. So that's totally up to you. I'll leave that up to you. But I wanted to answer that question. Trudy said, yes, please. Live trainings. Um, Jackie says, do you suggest interns for sourcing? Jackie, I didn't even see that, but I answered your question. Mwah, we are in sync tonight. I love it when our energy vibes. Lori says, this is Lori J. She says, do you have a job description for a commission only business development person? No, but you can go online and pull any type of job description or write one from scratch and just say commission only. Okay. There are a lot of business development folks that work on a commission only. I don't, um, I didn't know we were talking about business development, but there are a lot of business development folks that talk about commission only that will work commission only. And, um, am I back Jay? He said, I went away. Am I back? Um, so you can definitely do that. It's so funny because, um, a lot of people will, um, a lot of people who are in sales, like in it sales or in healthcare sales, they'll take on a part-time job doing business development for a staffing agency. So um, I've even seen some staffingpreneurs um, become very successful 
with placing, um, with getting um, people who are in wine sales to um, to to do some business develop for business development for them. And I think wine sales are very interesting because if you think about it, they're going around and they're talking to a high end group of people, right? So that's definitely a great way. You want to look for people who are in sales. Anybody who sold Kirby vacuum cleaners. Think about what industries hire commission only salespeople. Those people are never afraid to do commission only business development. All you got to do is train them. If you know how to do the business development, then you can do the training. If not, you can send them to me. You know, I love that type of stuff. So I just wanted to kind of um, help you there. Um, Jackie says, I get um, recruit, um, I get in, I get IT recruitment, college, you get to, I don't know, I didn't kind of get that, Jackie. Tell me again. <laughs> Tell me again, I didn't get that. Um, Lori says, what's the normal commission percentage for a BD person? That kind of varies. I think I've answered this in the past. Uh, sometimes BD people are all the way up to 35%. I've even seen business development people get 65%. And again, that's going to depend on whether it's contract or contract to hire or direct hire. Um, so on the direct hire side, I typically say anywhere between 10 and 25%. It is in your manual and you can do it out in tiers. You can break it out in tiers. Um, meaning if you sell this amount in staffing and recruiting, it is 10%. When you hit this amount, which may be 200,000, when you hit a half a million, it goes up to 20%. When you hit a um, million dollars in sales, it goes up to 30%. Anything over 1.5 million in sales is 35%. If they're bringing in that much money, you're not going to be afraid to share your, um, your profits with them. So, so keep that in mind. Um, I hope that answered your question a little bit. Contract, you can do the same thing. Jackie says, hire them, pay the minimum wage, and train them. It's a win-win for everybody as far as interns. You're 100% right. Um, if you're going to do interns, I would put them on a salary, to be honest with you, because like I said, the laws have gotten very strict over the last couple of years, and you don't want to do anything um, to get, get fined in your business before you even start making really good money. Hey, Deshaun. Mwah. I miss you. I have and seen you in a while. All right. Thank you, Lori. She said, wonderful, D. Okay. So I also had a couple of other questions here. Mark says, can you help with people who have criminal records? I cannot personally. However, there are a number of staffingpreneurs out there that do work with individuals with criminal records. So you I kind of went away. My phone went off. So Mark, to answer your question, you can go to the Six Figure Staffing Group um, and you can um, ask around because I see a lot of conversation in there with staffingpreneurs who are working with um, individuals who have a criminal record. Um, Jackie says, hire college students, stay-at-home moms, retirees, vets, Jackie, psst. You're on fire, girl. That's what I'm talking about. Be innovative and in how you grow your staff, especially um, just work people who want to work from home because you're typically working from home. She says also in the Georgia Department of Labor, they have a program for people with a criminal background. So there you go, Mark. Um, Olivia, I hope you still see me. I see, oh no, what happened? My phone keeps ringing. People are just calling me. I don't know. I'm popular today. Uh, <laughs> Tree says, in addition to purchasing the basic plus package, how much capital is needed for the website and other resources needed to commence the business? That's a trick question, and I'm going to tell you why. Everyone has their own, um, I guess when I say, um, standard about what they want to, how they want their business to look and how they want it set up. So I can say you can do this on a minimum budget of 500 bucks. But you can also spend $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 too. If you're someone like me, I kind of like plush the plush life so to some degree. So I'm willing to pay a little bit more for those things. Some people are starting on a budget and they have a minimum. They're building their own website, which is about 50 bucks on, um, if you do a theme forest theme, you're going to pay 10, 20 bucks for your domain and your hosting. Um, and then 90, at least 99 bucks for your applicant tracking system. Those are the things that you need the most. So, and then, you know, and then so on. So it really depends on your your budget, whatever your budget is, pretty much you'll be able, if it's at least $500, you'll be able to get this business up and going. I always say, tell people to at least have $1,000 to work with to get you started over the first couple of months. 
um, or the first month or so to get the business up and going. I hope that helped just a little bit on that question. Trees. Um, Sasha says, oh, wow, my cardiology professor, professor who has to be, happens to be a, a Filipina always brags on how wonderful the nurses there are. Funny you should mention them. They are some amazing nurses in the Philippines. Like in real life, it's crazy. Um, so yes, international recruiting is an option for each and every one of you guys today. We have a payroll funding company that can assist you with that international staffing. Um, so that's a great thing. However, you might want, want to wait until things calm down here in the U S because I saw that there's some type of, um, warning to up uh, from other countries about not coming into the U S until things calm down here. So just keeping it real. Lana says, I'm listening to you live, but I couldn't figure out how to log on. Um, you're so cool. Bring in that business. You will train. Love it. Thanks, Lana. I love you so much for that. Kendall says, Hey D I live in New York city and the staffing industry is so oversaturated. Having a hard time trying to pick a niche was thinking of how to incorporate security guards. First of all, I never used the word saturated. There is no industry on this planet that's saturated because a niche can be niched within a niche, within a niche, within a niche. It's only saturated if you don't know how to work your market. So you've got to take that negative word. And I say that's a negative word in this particular instance because you this is 7.3 billion people on this planet. Okay, how many people are in New York doing how many positions? There is no industry that is saturated, okay? So I'll just say that. Also, I would say um, stay away from areas like security and different things like that. You're going to have a harder time getting funding. I'll say it like I said all the time. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the hottest three markets that are out there right now is information technology, healthcare, and healthcare IT. Um, if you are in the cannabis industry and some of you are diving into the cannabis industry, then security guards are needed, but it's harder to get funding for your um, payroll funding. So I just want to throw that out there. The more risk it is for a position, um, the more upfront money that you're going to need um, to run this business. So if you have a nice budget to run the business and you're not on a budget, then you'll do great in security. You can cover your own workman's comp insurance and your own payroll. If you're doing this on a budget, you definitely don't want to go into that space. It, you will drive yourself crazy. Uh, Sharon says, if we're recruiting in nursing, do we have the candidate um, do we have the candidate fill out a skills assessment or test them on their knowledge? Oh man, Sharon, that's a great question. If the client requested, sure. Typically in the professional solutions space, I, in my experience, if they're in the professional solutions space, they're making 70, 80K, they kind of get offended. You know, like, why are you testing me? I've been doing this for a long time kind of thing. If the client requests that you can do so, if it's a part of your business model, you can do so. You may get pushed back. I don't know if I would necessarily force someone to do it, but if you feel like it's something that you want to do as an added benefit or service to your clients, feel free to do so. That is not, that's, you know, you can definitely do so. That's a great question, Sharon. Mwah. I really appreciate you for, for asking that question. Um, hey, Brett, I'm so glad to see you here. Um, Mark says, yes, I'm aware, but One Stop Here has a problem with it. I, I don't have any control over that. Mark, um, Shalonda says, how about a customized package with you? I just want training. I have the website ready. If you go to staffingpreneursacademy.com, you'll see the pricings tab under there. There are options for one-on-one -on -one training. Um, towards the end of this uh, session, I'll tell you what the prices are for the one-on-one -on -one training right now. I've literally been trying to get rid of it for about a year and people don't want me to. So I just... Stay here for you because I love you guys. Hey, Tiffany, I'm so glad you're here. Um, Corey, yes, I said a theme, forest theme. You can go to themeforest.com, I think, or themeforest.net. And um, they have some WordPress themes. Or you can type in WordPress themes in Google. Um, you can also type in free WordPress themes. I like the paid ones because they come with support and they're more interactive. But you can go 
um, any way on that. I love this. The questions are flowing in. Um, Olivia says there is, she is, let me tell you something. Olivia is going crazy about this new ATS that she has found, guys. I'm going to post it in the Staffingpreneurs Academy group. and um, But I'm not going to do it just yet because I want to talk to the guy before I introduce y'all to this new ATS. But she's falling in love with it. And actually, I um, got a demo through Olivia, and I'm in love with it too. But I want to talk to him first. So we may have a new ATS that we can work with, a new company, which I'm really excited. Y'all see I'm smiling. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. Um, Stephanie says, you just answered half of my question. I probably should not focus on assessments or testings for experienced legal professionals, not necessarily for attorneys. Most of the time your client will tell you, they'll come right out and say, these are the top things that I'm looking for in a position, or these are the things that I want the most. That's what's most important. Now in the legal space, if you're doing like a legal secretary, I would definitely test her like on her typing skills, on her grammar punctuation, on her um, her ability to function with Microsoft Word or Microsoft Office. But if it's like an attorney, I probably wouldn't do a skills assessment unless the client asked me. I definitely don't want to miss out on um, on a great client or a great candidate over something as small as a, a skills assessment unless the client specifically asks for it. Um, Constance says, oh no, I have to go now posting business highlights in the group. Keep up. Constance, please don't leave without your praise report. <laughs> Did she leave? She left. Oh man, she's posted some of her. We'll do Constance's praise report in a minute. Ryan says, ensure all testing is EEOC compliant. Listen, most testing companies um, that are people, co companies that are offering assessments are EEOC compliant. So you shouldn't have to worry about that uh, with the standard companies that are out there. Uh, let's see, Khadija, hey, how you doing, my love? Kendall says, thanks, D. never thought about it that way, and I will now delete the word saturate, saturated from my vocabulary. Thank you, I gotta like that, because uh, we, we, we speak all positivity here in Staff Entrepreneurs Academy. We speak what we desire, not what we fear. We only speak what we desire, not what we fear. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Ah, Shay, hello. We only speak what we desire, not what we fear. That's what I'm talking about. Trudy said, amen. Okay, Sharon says, what about a skills assessment questionnaire? Is that more acceptable? I, again, when we're talking about, it depends if you're talking about commercial or professional solutions. Their resume, and a lot of times you can't learn a lot by the resume, but when you start asking them questions, you should be able to figure out whether or not that person is 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 you know able to to um, is whether that person is good for the position. You can hear by the way they talk. You guys hear me. You know that I know what I'm talking about. When you're talking to a candidate, you'll know whether you can figure out pretty pretty quickly on in the conversation that they know what they're talking about. Again, I would like to find out from my client, what are the top three things that you're looking for in this position? Um, it is our goal to screen these candidates first and to make sure that they have everything um, that the client is looking for, but only the client at the end of the day will really be the one that will be uh, to determine whether or not that candidate is going to be a fit. Um, you know, I would never say not do a skills assessment, but again, if you're recruiting in the professional solution space, I would not allow that to be a make or breaker. Some companies will require their skills assessments test to be taken before. So it really depends on the client and what type of service and what level of service that you want to offer. If that makes sense, Sharon, I hope that makes sense. Okay, I'm getting a lot of amens. I love that. We only speak what we desire, not what we fear. Um, Ryan says, using staffing language is important. People are impressed when you know the lingo. That is very true, um, Ryan. Sharon, did I answer your question a little bit? How did you feel about my response? If you didn't like it, it's okay. <laughs> I just want your feedback, okay? 
And that's just my professional opinion. Okay, she says, yes, thanks. That's just based on what I've experienced. When you're in the commercial space, salaries lower than 60K, I believe skills assessments are a requirement. You need to make sure, especially when you're talking about customer service, you're talking about, um, um, uh, you know, um, administrative, even some warehouse positions, you want to make sure that they know how to use the terminals that are now associated with those positions. But if you're talking about an executive or an RN or, uh, you know, it just depends. And in some staffing agencies for RNs, they do um, test. Again, you just want to connect with your client, have a very open relationship with your client to find out if that's something that they want and or need and or require. And that'll let you know whether or not that's something that you actually want to do. Um, but, uh, let's just see. Jay says, I am always offended. When I'm asked to fill one out and I am always asked again and again, laugh out loud. I, I, and I know he is and I get it because if, if, I've been in recruiting for 20 years. If somebody sends me a, an assessment about recruiting, I'm going to be like, no, for what? Like I can, my, my, my background speaks for itself. My track record speaks for itself. Like why am I do, doing a skills assessment? I mean, they gotta be paying me a crap load of money for me to do one of those suckers. So I understand Jay. Um, but again, when you're in a professional solutions, people, typically those people are kind of cocky when they know their stuff. Like, me and Jay, and they're like, uh-uh, you're not, you're not, you're wasting my time. I got other recruiters who aren't asking about that. So just play with that, you know, play with that a little bit and see how your market responds to that. And again, how your clients respond. Olivia says, I have a question. How important is thought leadership on your niche recruitment firm website? How often should I be posting? When you say thought leadership, can you expound on that a little bit more for everyone who is listening to that question? And I will wait for your response, Miss Olivia. <laughs> um, and while we're waiting for that, um, N ask Hi D, what's your opinion on splits board? Um, would you recommend this route for beginners? Yes, 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 yes. Um, we, matter of fact, go to staffingpreneursplits.com. We, we've got lots of jobs and we're definitely looking for staffingpreneurs to help us, um, find people great opportunities and to make more and more and more and more and more money. Right? Um, so yes, yes, yes. Splits board is a, a splits boards are a great starter. Um, however, don't, don't, I try not to use your rookiness. Like the thing is, is even though you're on a splits board and you're a rookie, still try to carry yourself as a vet in this industry um, so that they want to use you over and over and over again. Alicia says, I totally recommend the board. And the reason why she said that is because she made a placement and she got a check coming. <laughs> So that's why she said it. People who use the splits board and have made placements, they always recommend it because she's got money coming in now that she wouldn't have had coming in um, while she's waiting to gain her own client. So it's definitely a great strategy. She also says the splits helped her get out there and it also helped her to learn the process even more. I want to go back, first of all, before I go back to Olivia, Jay said cocky.com. Laugh out loud. High five, Jay. <laughs> Hop, 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 hop. Okay, Olivia was asked the question earlier I want to go back to. She says, how important is thought leadership on your niche recruiting firm website? How often should I be posting? I asked her to expound on that. She was speaking about blogging. Anybody that has been here with me in the academy for the last couple of years, you know I am an advocate of blogging. You must blog. You must blog. I don't want to even hear. I don't have time. We got time to repost on social media. We've got time to post on social media. We should be blogging. Now, you can blog and it doesn't have to be an overwhelming or daunting process. I typically like to blog about things that I'm passionate about within the recruiting and staffing industry and or within my niche. But I always tell you, use blogging to your advantage. Like this is a great way to meet exceptional candidates. This is a great way to meet exceptional clients. Blog about them. Call a candidate that you don't think you can place and say, I want to interview you for my upcoming blog. Call somebody on your target list, a hiring manager, and ask him if you can interview them for your upcoming blog. 
Find a YouTube video, maybe one of mine. Bullhorn Staffing says that when their new recruits come in, they send them to YouTube to look at my videos. So pull one of my videos up and say, this is some training I got. Have you heard of this young lady? Do a blog article about it. Okay, I'm plugging myself there, which is kind of tacky, but I'm just keeping it real. So there are many things that you can do, but blogging is imperative. I really also suggest, this is, I think is a great idea, but you guys, a lot of you are newbies, like uh, blog about some of the experiences that you're having with candidates, what's working, what's not working, what's good, what's not good. Just make it, just make it fun. You're like, it doesn't have to be a daunting process. Yes, Treese, this Q&A will be available later. Um, and you can definitely check it out there. Da -da 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 -da. Um, question is, Hey D, what's your opinion? Oh, okay, we already got that one. I'm trying to go through. Hey Joe Miller, it's good to see you. Glad you're you're healthy and looking great. Um, awesome. All right. Um, uh, uh, Aaron says thank Amanda too because she works very hard. She also keeps reminding you to keep the splits board going, and she does because I'm telling you, I'm always like, look, these people don't even understand what they have. I got to tell you this, y'all, we actually on the split sports had a relationship with a couple of job boards where we were offering discounted prices. The staffingpreneurs did not take advantage of it and we had to cut that portion of the program. Y'all will not believe how many companies are reaching out to me now asking for that service and saying, what the hell? What's wrong with your staffingpreneurs? Do they not know what they had? Been there, done that, honey. Just got to shake my D head. <laughs> but uh, we do still have the starter package for you to get the jobs that you need. I'm going to keep the questions coming. Keep the questions coming. What time is it? Okay. Um, email, inbound email strategies. Constance asks about who handles the incoming messages? Do you have a mail management strategy and procedure in place? Somebody please remind me and tag me because we will do a live training on that. Bye, Sasha. Thank you for being here. I love you. Um, Renee says, uh, da -da -da. we have a live training Monday, at nine o'clock um, Eastern time. So if you're a staffingpreneur and you have not received that, please go to the Facebook group, the members only Facebook group, so that you can get the link to log in for that. You do not want to miss it. The topic of that is um, how to use the contracts, when to use the contracts, and how to negotiate the contract. Um, Lori says, I knew what I had and I missed my monster.com access. I know you do, my love. I miss it too. Um, it's pretty crappy the way that thing went down, but that's okay. We move forward. We are strong staffing producers here. Um, Stephanie says, I would like direction on where to get some type of HR consulting training. <sighs> my niche is legal and... That is the industry of my profession, so that's covered. I feel that I need some type of HR recruitment training to help me with interviewing, assessments, testing. Thank you. Well, the recruitment training, naturally, I provide, but the HR consulting, um, I do think that um, there are a lot of HR consultants out there. I have two that I typically work with. Um, but we've gotten some feedback from some of the staffingpreneurs that they weren't, one was non-responsive and the other one wasn't necessarily ready. So you got to go out there and find one. I will put their contact information in if you want to reach out to them. Maybe they're in a different space now. I would also suggest that you go to SHRM, S-H-R-M dot org. That can be a very free, well, you have to pay for SHRM, but there are a lot of free resources there to help support you. Um, there as well. So I just want you to visit Sherm.org and you should be able to find also a directory of other HR consultants. If you are an HR consultant and you're watching this live, my staffingpreneurs need you. So please reach out to me at dwilliams at staffingpreneursacademy.com. That's D-E-E -E, Williams at staffingpreneursacademy.com. I would love to speak with you and um, you get to know you and see if you would be a good fit for my um, for my community. We are looking for HR consultants to help support my community. Um, da -da 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 -da, Lori, let's just see. Um, Olivia says we need more recruitment and uh, more marketing positions on the split sport. We'll make that happen for you because I really do love you in real life. <laughs> 
Uh, Tanisha says, I told my friend to join. His name is Chaz. Okay, I'll look out for Chaz. Hey, Chaz, if you're watching, good. Thank you for ha being here. Um, I hope that was helpful, Stephanie. Uh, Deidre, thanks for the compliment about my mom. She was like blushing in the most major way. It was so funny to see. Um, did it one more thing she wants to add? Career consulting. I'm keeping up with what's happening in the legal industry, but what about a consulting perspective? What type of training should I seek for that? What kind of consulting are you thinking about doing? Are you going to have a law staff on your, on your, um, payroll that are going out there. Like I, I need you to clarify that question a little bit more when you say consulting, uh, consulting for you as a business or, uh, a, a career consultant to offer to your legal folks. So that question wasn't as clear as I needed to be so that I can get a good understanding of how to respond. Um, yes, tree. She said her niche is legal. Would she be open to one-on-one -on -one questions? I'm considering the legal niche as well. Well, I believe she's brand new. So your questions may want to be directed towards me, but you can definitely reach out to her as well. Um, I, she is actually in the private staffing preneurs Academy group. So I don't know how you would necessarily connect, but, um, uh, if she says it's okay, I'll definitely forward the information over. I'm all about making great connections if that's cool. So Stephanie, if it's cool for me to share your information with Treese, um, I would definitely like to do so. She wants to ask you questions about your legal niche. Um, da -da 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 Tanisha says, um, on staff and preneurs, I mean, Chaz. Okay, good. Um, let's see. I got that question. I feel like I'm missing questions um and oh i got nine minutes before we start the praise report let's just see we've had some really good stuff here Do -do 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 -do. what am i missing what am i missing um oh i had a list of stuff announcements that i wanted to share let me just go to six figure staffing and make sure i didn't miss an, miss any questions that may have been posted there and then i'll go do my announcements and then praise report and then we'll talk about pricing for people who are interested and then we will go from there okay so no questions on here okay great any questions all right i think i did good i answered a lot of questions tonight ah, my voice is burning um let's just see okay so a few announcements and then we will go into um, our praise report. So get your praise reports ready. Start putting them in the box. And uh, we've got three, I think, three or four off the break that I already know. So make sure you're ready. So boot camp. Do we have two more boot camps coming up? Now, there are only 18 seats available for both of these boot camps. We have already locked in 10 seats for the Dallas boot camp, which means there are only eight seats left. And, um, and then, and so you only got like a week or so to sign up. So if you have not done so, you, if you ordered the six figure staffing package and you want to go to a boot camp, Dallas is a great place, or you can go to staffingpreneursacademy.com and under the boot camps tab, you can sign up. It's three days, $999. I think it's a sale going on. I have to talk to my staff about that, but I think it's a sale going on. So try to get it while it's a sale before I tell them to turn it off. Okay. So, um, we have the Dallas boot camp. It's going to be awesome. We actually, that's the last week, the last three days in July, the first Three, the first week in August, last three days of that first week, we will be in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, uh, Philadelphia, Delaware, New York. Uh, I want to see y'all there. What's up? You know, what's going on? Um, we have a special guest coming, a YouTube consultant who is effing amazing she's going to be with us on day one it's going to be great we may even stream live no promises on that you got to be there to see um get into those boot camps sign up um three days if you don't know about the boot camps i'm going to just tell you a little bit about them we actually call candidates live we call clients live it's a real hands-on working boot camp i still owe certificates to just about everyone who's done a boot camp this year we have been working on designing website badges for each of you to put on your website to say you completed your boot camp. 
Also, we um, are finishing up our new design. Y'all know I'm finicky about stuff. So we have a new design coming for the certificate. So if you haven't received it yet, do not fret. You will get it. I just kind of move a little slow when I'm being picky. Um, Jackie, yes, we also go over marketing and branding in grave detail on day one. We answer questions and we start prepping for day two and day three. When you sign up, You'll get a slew of emails that'll come into your um, and to come into your email over the course of a week or so that will prepare you for the live boot camp. So be ready. Make sure you have your uh, laptop with you and your cell phone. We will be calling your clients. We will be calling your candidates. The last boot camp we did was what L.A. and I think Ash was there. We had a young lady in that one, and I think the testimonial um, video is coming out. She came in there shaking and scared, right? I ain't going to say her name, but she came in because I think she's on this call. She came in shaking and scared, but she walked out of that boot camp ready to rock it out. I mean, by the last day, she was taking over the boot camp with her calls. So if you are scared or nervous or uncomfortable about making calls, the boot camp is so awesome. Um, so I did that. I did the certificate. We talked about the splits board really quickly. I just got to say again on um, staffingpreneursplits.com, the checks are rolling in. If you guys have signed up for the splits board and bailed out because you weren't seeing any type of um, action immediately, if you signed up and you decided that you couldn't afford it, the little $49 a month, I'm telling you right now, you're missing out because while you all were doing that, there were people that were literally working those positions and now $30,000 checks are coming in, $12,000 checks are coming. I'm not going to tell their business, but I'm just letting you know, guys, y'all are missing out. Take advantage of the resources that I give to you because I'm doing them to assist you, not to hurt you or anything like that. Alicia said, will there be an app for any of the sites? I saw it mentioned on the Academy. We are working on an app, but... It'll come, you know, everything comes in due time. We are working on an app. As a matter of fact, I have a call scheduled with a guy tomorrow. I keep missing it because I've had clients back to back. He has been pounding my phones down like, D, I really want to build this out for you. He actually wants to build five different apps out for us for different various things. So that will come. Also, the audio book is officially done. So we just got to get, get get everything together. So you guys will see that on a recruitmentstore.com where you can buy the audio version of Staffingpreneurs Academy. I think in some areas we may just add the audio piece for free where I feel like it's 100% needed. But right now, according to Dana, everyone has to pay for it. So I don't know. Um, but I'll give you more details. But it is completely finished and ready. So if you guys are an audiobook junkie like me and like to listen to training in your car, that is coming. It keeps you kind of in that space of getting your candidates together. Okay, I got two minutes. Um, today we did the live boot camp on the road on your rhythm, on your sourcing rhythm. Make sure you check that video out. We actually made live calls. Um, da -da 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 -da. more live trainings to come based on the feedback that you guys are giving me. So if there are specific things that you want to learn for the next two weeks, I am not traveling other than to my mom. I will be in Houston. I think next week, the weeks are coming by so fast. I'll be in Houston next week. So, but I do have time and putting it on the cal calendar for some live trainings. I like to play with you guys a little bit and we haven't done some in a long time. So they will be there as well. A Jackie said, audio book, yes, D, that is awesome. All right, so we are now hitting the 8 o'clock hour. This is one of my favorite parts of our Q&A call. Y'all see me blushing, right? Okay, I'm like glowing and blushing because we get to talk about the praise report. Woo! <laughs> Did I do like a hallelujah thing right there? Okay, so let's talk about some of the successes that um, that were taking place. We had um, Therese a New York schedule and oh, nope, nobody signed up. So nope, I'm not coming to New York. You got to sign up. If you got to tell me, y'all say you want me to come to New York, but nobody signed up. So you got to come maybe to Atlanta. I may do one Atlanta one. I want to put a question out though. Um, I was thinking about doing a live um, boot camp three day online, maybe towards the mid or end of the year. 
Do you think that's something that you guys would be interested in? It's still going to be three days. It's still going to be on a Wednesday, Thursday, and a Friday all day long. So that you guys would be interested in. No worries, Treese. Um, but I'm here. Um, when I'm not going anywhere either. Y'all can't get rid of me. Oh, I got a lot of stuff. Um, Houston, call me. Okay, great. Of course, you know I'm already on top of it. I just haven't sent it out. Um, I am being worked like crazy to this week. Um, not just for my clients, but for my mama. <laughs> Who keeps wanting to get on camera? Y'all see my mama. So, um, so it's been crazy. So y'all got to bear with me this week. And my staff is asking for everything. Okay. Jay says online. Yes. Deshaun says yes. Okay. So we'll look at maybe putting that together. I got to see how many people are into that. Um, Alicia said yes. Tanisha said yes. Um, Ryan says, I have a solution to your problem. Tell me more, Ryan. I like that. Aaron says, I may be interested in an online boot camp. Awesome. Jackie says, online boot camp. Great idea. I typically do the online boot camp for the startup section, not always for the actual like getting in and over the phone because I really wasn't sure how that would work. But today I did those calls and it worked pretty well. Would you guys agree? I mean, I kind of enjoy doing the calls today for you guys. So I think that we could definitely do an online boot camp and reach out to hiring managers and to candidates and talk a little bit about branding and marketing and maybe bring some special guests on. But it just depends. Um, and we may even lower the price just a little bit since it's online. Um, Ryan says, I have a guy that would teach government contracting class. Um, Ryan, get in contact with me on Facebook so we can talk a little bit more. We do need someone like that. Um, if you are watching this live and you're in the government contracting, my staffingpreneurs are asking for you as well. So please get in contact with me at DEE Williams at staffingpreneursacademy.com. I love that. Tiffany says online, yes, hurry. Um, so that's great. Okay, so we're going to dive into our praise report. So first of all, Amanda posted information about the split sport placements. We just landed a brand new client. I can't divulge who that is, a huge client. So we've got more job orders coming in like crazy in the IT finance and healthcare space. So be on the lookout for that. Um, but let's see, somebody just left me a voicemail. Okay, hold on. So Shalonda, is Shalonda on this call? Shalonda had a praise report. Yes, yeah, Shalonda. So Shalonda got a contract, a corp to corp position, and um, they are ready to go, I believe. Hopefully she's landed this position by now. So there we go. Hey, Shalonda, congratulations. Go Shalonda with your praise report. I love that. Shalonda also has a placement coming out. This week, she's um, she has taken full advantage of staffing preneurs split. So way to go, Shalonda. Send her some love. Deshaun, I'll answer that question in a moment. Um, let's see. Constance had a praise report this morning as well. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. So y'all want you to give uh, Constance some love. Da -da 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 -da. Hold on. Where's it at? 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 Did it, did it, did it. Where's she at? Where's she at? Ah. Okay, here she go. Um, Constance says, I was one of several speakers scheduled for a live on-site one-on-one hour presentation on June 6th. My topic was resume writing and interview tips. On June 9th, an individual that was in the audience reached out to me via LinkedIn, also located and connected with me on Facebook, sent me an inbox message. She asked if I would be open to meet for coffee, tea, or lunch. We met for coffee and tea on the 17th of June. She wanted to learn all about her Constance's, Constance, I said it right, Constance, <laughs> you know, hyphen, or what is that, the, the you know what I'm talking about. Um, her company and her services and wanted to see how they could partner. Um, she is a retired military and a successful realtor. The success of that meeting has led to connecting weekly. She often refers business to and from the candidates to accept job offers and needs to re and, and need to relocate. She's sending business to her for her resume writing and career opportunities. She says, in my D. Williams voice, it has been absolutely amazing. Woo! Constance, 
Christ. Congratulations. And thank you so much for sharing that praise report. I want to give a special shout out to Olivia who really rocked it out during a um, an, a, an interview that we did on, on t- I think, two days ago. So if you don't know, I kind of was her person um, just to kind of show her through the training. But she had to follow up with the candidate and continue to build the relationship and to keep the relationship going. I think she was a little nervous at first because she texted me and said, do you have a template for this or some type of... Um, script that I can put out there. I was like, mm, 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 mm. you got to speak from your heart. So she did just that. And she sent him a message and had a little uh, YouTube video in there based on some of the likes that she saw on his Twitter page. He responded back. He was so much enthusiasm. He was giving her ideas. I don't want to, I can't pull up the email because that's her personal information. But um, she, he literally was giving information, wanting to work with her. And they're establishing a relationship that I believe she would not, um, that she will value for the rest of her career. So I just want to give a special shout out to Olivia for all the work that she's doing and really building her talent pipeline. Olivia, great job. I absolutely love that. Um, Because remember, a success in this business does not just include making a placement. Okay? It doesn't just include making a placement. It also includes the interaction that you're having with candidates, the interaction that you're having with clients are important. So keep that in mind. Um, I am missing praise reports. If I'm missing your praise report, I apologize. Some of these I'm trying to do off memory. If you guys can put them in the box so I don't forget, please do. Um, she actually, Olivia says she just finished a blog about that experience. Like, see, she's really taking, um, really adding in, you know, adding value to her business by becoming a thought leader in her industry. People will work with her for that. And I'm just going to tell you the cl- that candidate was so excited. The candidate said a couple of times, you don't find recruiters that actually take the time to sit down and to get to know candidates. And so it was really refreshing for him. And because of that, he was willing to do anything for her. So that's that's how you build real relationships in this industry, including giving her job orders. So that was freaking awesome. Um, a lot of thanks here. Let me read these. Uh, Latasha, I hope you can hear me now. Um, let's see. Tanisha said, congrats, Shalonda. Rocking it on. Margaret said, congrats, Shalonda. Trudy said, congrats. Uh, Constance, go Olivia. Trudy says, celebrate small victories. You got to celebrate the small ones and the big ones because the small ones actually lead to the big ones, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, Glasgow says, um, wanted to know about how we con- contract the customer before we start looking for customers. Can you ask that again? Because I think that came out kind of uh, interesting. I didn't catch that. Hey, Glasgow, I'm so glad to see you here. You know you're one of my favorite staffingpreneurs. Cannot wait to see you in D.C. for the live boot camp. Can you ask the question again? Because it get typed in the message box a little weird. And um, I want to make sure that I answer your question correctly. Um, Any more questions, guys? We do not have to go on through at 830. I want to get everybody's questions in. I also want to make sure um, that there was a gentleman that joined the Academy recently. I got to figure out his name. He had some really good questions that he emailed me, but I really don't want to. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can get these questions up. I know you guys can see my screen, so I got to do this because this is my personal email. So hold on one second and I'll put you back on in a quick moment. I just want to make sure that I am keeping everyone's information um, confidential. Uh, Where is his questions? He had some good questions, but oh, here it is. All right. Um, And let's just see. All right. So this question is from Roger. Okay. I've got two here and I'm going to open this back up. So I'm going to get these answered as well. Okay. I hope you can see my screen again, guys. Okay. Um, So Roger asks, 
Um, there are a number of jobs listed on job boards. Many of these jobs are either posted by the end client or third party recruiter or broker. As a practice, do you contact the firms that posted the job to determine if they will accept resumes submitted by agencies? You definitely can, but in my opinion, it's kind of a form of spamming. I always say when you're gonna do business development with somebody, you really wanna to try to establish a relationship. But I would not be afraid to step out there and to reach out with and to them if you have a candidate that is a fit for the position. Like, please don't go around calling hiring managers asking for job orders and you don't even have a pipeline of those people set up. You're no value to them. They can do the same thing that you're doing just by posting and praying. So you really want to make sure you have a great network before you go out there and start just spamming people, asking them. And I say that with love and respect because I use the word spam. Asking if you can um, submit onto their jobs. A lot of companies you'll see, they will say to you outwardly, no recruiters allowed because recruiters have gone out and spammed them and not taking the time to build the relationship so maybe take a different approach when you go go about that Deshaun said congrats to everyone that is so awesome um Roger asks another question he says I'm look I'm listening to step six the candidate sourcing and pipeline learn how to find and attract your capital which is one of the modules within staffing preneurs academy he says how to recruit uh, create your recruiting strategy find your best candidates during this session you suggested suggested that we contact you if there's a niche job board if there is not a niche job board for your niche uh, my niche is Oracle governance risk and compliance security and controls there are a number of job boards for IT people however I cannot find one for my niche uh, would we use our ATS as a job board for this niche or do you have other recommendations? I totally would build a job board. You can do it for like 69 bucks if you get a theme forest theme. There are already job boards that are like basically set up and ready for you. It doesn't cost a lot of money and you can definitely go out and launch your own job board, Roger. So don't be afraid to add something more. You want to kind of keep them separate though because if somebody feels like, you know, you're going into a, a job, I, I, it's just, just, I would kind of do two separate things because it, it just keeps it clean if, if that's the best way to say it. Um, so I'm going to um, just kind of answer there. Uh, Glasgow said, yes, he came back. He says, how do we lock the customer down and begin sending resumes? What do we need to have in place? Our regular contract or is there another contract that says we're going to begin submitting candidates and resumes? Glasgow, you locking down the customer, first of all, requires building a relationship, okay? So you've got to build that relationship first. Once you build the relationship and you negotiate the, the fee agreement or the rates that you're going to do, then you send them a contract. Once you get that contract in place, it is not till you have a contract in place that you submit candidates. I cannot stress that enough. It's so disheartening to hear, to see and hear staffingpreneurs so thirsty to fill a job that they will go and send a resume over to a client without a contract in place. And then they get pissed off when the client steals their candidate or when the client says, you know, and so just don't do it. Just get the contract. If a client is not willing to sign a contract with you, they are not worth your time. Do not do the work before you have the contract in play. It's just a respect issue. And if they're a great client, they'll respect you enough to do a um, to do a contract. Um, and, and then Monday at 9 p.m., we'll go over all the contracts. You can do a master service agreement and or if it's just a contract or contingency agreement, you can do those as well. All of those are in the academy under the basic plus package and the fee agreements and forms. And again, we'll go over that on Monday at 9 p.m. Um, you do not begin submitting resumes until um, you have a contract in place. Uh, Jackie says how to approach, we have 814, how to approach clients that indicate no calls from recruiters if you have candidates that would be a great fit. Again, you have to build relationships. So if they say no calls from recruiters, don't recruit them as in a staffing agency where you're trying to get business development. Why not flip the script and recruit them as if you're pipelining 
for their particular skill set, build a relationship with them as if they are a candidate, and then they'll ultimately convert over and give you those positions. Um, I hope that helped. Trudy said, exactly, D. Thanks, Trudy. I appreciate that, girl. Um, uh, Glasgow said, I remember the stress, but I forgot the steps. I don't know about the stress, but um, got it. No contract, no resumes. That's exactly right. Is it okay to send a blind resume? Um, yes, you can definitely send blind resumes, but you, um, yes, no, it's no but behind it. You can send blind resumes. However, again, when you are, that is a form of spam. Okay. You really have to understand. I can't stress the recruiting industry is hurting the way they are right now because there is a lack of relationships and those hiring managers are sick and tired of it. Reach out to them. Tell them you, you like their profile. Ask them if you can meet. Um, give them some value. Show them how you can be a value to their business or just let them know you're on my radar. I'm not calling for business. I'm literally just calling to let you know you're on my radar and I'm going to be reaching out because you're definitely somebody I want to do business with. You got to be strategic. If everybody is saying the same thing, what do you what makes you think you're going to get the same response, you know, a different response than everybody else is getting. Cold calling works to some degree, but I'm telling you, hiring managers do not like it. They really don't. They actually get pretty annoyed by recruiters who do that. So do me a favor, go out to different events and different groups and, and, and net meetups and networking events, meet your hiring managers in person. Do me a favor, do research on your hiring managers to see what they like and what they don't like. Do research on the company to see what challenges that they're having and then talk to your clients as if you have a genuine interest in being a solutions provider and that you're not just interested in making the placement, okay? I got emotional there for a second. Did y'all feel that? <laughs> okay, because that's all they're getting. They're looking for more. And what makes you powerful is the niche. The fact that you have a network, okay? Um, Latasha, you should get, e you, uh, you're already registered. Your email should start flowing in of all the things that you need for the boot camp. I love you. Um, oh, Trudy's praise report. Trudy says nine more new contract hires last week. Way to go, Trudy. Oh, man, that is awesome. Woo, woo. That is an awesome praise report. Thank you so much. Y'all give Trudy some love. Show her, tell her, let her know that we celebrate those successes. Oh, y'all see our puppy staffing preneurs say hi. Say hi, guys. Oh, say hi. Say hi. I love you too much. He heard me clapping. He came over to kiss me because he thought that clap was for him. <laughs> hey, my sweet Pudum Pie. Okay, great. I love you too. Mommy loves you too. Okay, so let's see. We've got a couple of more questions here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Tanisha, yes, we blind. We answered that. Yes. Trudy says, no contract, no candidate. That's, that is what you should remember. No contracts, no candidate. You need to have a contract in place legally to cover yourself. Because if you, it's, it's just, it's been a disaster when you don't do that. Um, Latasha says, we will work on contracts and work on them in Dallas. That's perfect. That's awesome. Um, Glasgow says, I have that. I'll see you Monday at 9 p.m. Not leaving, still watching. I love you so much, Glasgow. Thank you. Pam says, go, Trudy. Latasha says, great job. Tanisha says, yes, Trudy. I'd buy you a tequila if I was in your area, preferably Don Julio. Hey, Tanisha. <laughs> I love her. She gets it in. I love that. So that's awesome, Trudy. They try to buy you, buy you drinks, girl. Celebratory drinks. I love that. Um, Aaron says, way to go, Trudy. I love that. All right. So great. She said, bring the drinks on. Bring them on. <laughs> okay, great, guys. So my throat is raw from training all day. And um, thank goodness. Um, this is my last client for the evening, so I'll be drinking some tea with lemon so we can prepare for tomorrow. Um, I, I just want to say thank you. I just want to say I really appreciate you guys coming and, and taking time out of your Wednesday to join my Q&A call. 
um, for my staffingpreneurs. Thank you so, so, so much for being here. Uh, I love you guys and I will see you soon. Um, I'm going to keep this on for now, but I'm going to talk specifically to Facebook because there are a number of people here who are wondering what is Staffing Preneurs Academy and how can I get involved? Please go to www.staffingpreneursacademy.com. That's Staffing and Preneurs, like entrepreneurs, so staffingpreneursacademy.com. And, um, and then you can definitely check out all the different different services that we have. Uh, we The Staffing Preneurs Academy is our online platform. If you need one-on-one -on -one time with me, we have five different one-on-one -on -one programs at this point that range from um, I think two forty nine to a hundred thousand dollars, which is ultimately a million dollars. We just started a new one on one program where we'll build your staffing agency for you. It's a hundred thousand dollar down payment, and then we actually take ten percent of your profits up until you reach the million dollar mark. So of course, it is in our best interest to make sure you meet that million dollar. Um, that we get our million dollars. So 10%, that's a $10 million business for you. So really, I'm actually coming in and building your business for you along with my team. And we actually have six different experts that are coming in on the branding, marketing side, as well as the sourcing, recruiting, and HR. We literally build your full business from scratch, from the bottom up, if that's something that you are interested in. Also, we have a $12,000 package where you work with me for 12 to 24 weeks, um, two hours a day, two days a week. Uh, we have a fast track package where we can get you up in six weeks, provided your schedule will allow. And, um, and then, of course, we have hourly one-on-one, -on -one, so it totally depends on you and what is what your goal is and what your budget is. We've actually, I believe we were closing the deal to our second million dollar client um, this week. So fingers crossed on that, if that happens. So we're definitely moving along in, in that space. If you want us to come and build your agency from scratch, uh, we'll have a lot of fun doing that. You know, I love being challenged. <laughs> so that's awesome. Um, and so, of course, we can do hourly. If you want to meet with me, you want to ask questions, and you don't have one-on-one -on -one time, you must, I repeat, you must purchase one-on-one -on -one time. My calendar really literally is packed from the time I wake up in the morning. Typically, my one-on-ones know I'm training sometimes till 2, 3 a.m. in the morning, depending on where the person is in the world or in on this coast. So I really don't have a lot of time to just do random phone calls. Plus, I still like to answer the phone when people call in, which some people say is psychotic. But if you're coming to work with me or coming in my academy, I want to know who you are. So um, if you just want to talk and ask questions and you did not sign up for the six-figure staffing program, which allots you two hours of one-on-one -on -one time with me, I cannot just do random questions. You've got to purchase purchase one-on-one -on -one time and we have them in 30 minute increments and one hour increments and I apologize I hope you don't think I'm being funny a guy yesterday thought I was being funny but it's just people are buying that time and I have to be respectful to them and I am also still a mother of three and I'm also still a woman and I need to just be able to take care of myself and sleep and eat as well so I need you to put that time on the calendar um your membership package ND is always the starter package for staffing preneur splits because the other two packages are no longer available. I just haven't had time to take them down and my team has not had time to take them down as well. Um, da -da -da -da. And if you want the one-on-one -on -one time, you again, you can go to Staff Entrepreneurs Academy under pricing, under the pricings package, and then you can order your one-on-one -on -one time. Um, please be respectful of my time. This is not my only business. I run a number of businesses. This is just the one that I um, am in love with the most, I think, maybe, maybe. I have another one. I'm really, I'm really in love with Better Healthy Body. Y'all visit betterhealthybody.com. Y'all know I'm on my health kit. Um, I've lost so much weight so many inches it's crazy um okay so i think that's it i um don't forget to support a black owned business black uh i don't say black people um americans who have color that are melanated however you want to say it in the political correct way we support every industry every ethnicity on this planet our spending power i saw today was 1.7 trillion i've been saying 1.3 so 
we have a group on Facebook that is um, tag a black owned business. Please go there. There are so many businesses listing their, um, their services. You can also list yours as well. If you're a black owned business, please support, support, support. But I love everybody. Y'all already know that my, um, my love just shines across the world and says, um, Oh, the starter package, D, the starter package, okay, on staffing preneur splits, the starter package. Okay, I think I just breathed. I think I just had a woosah moment, got some good prana in. Do y'all have any other questions before I got? Oh, thank you, Pam. I love you. All right, guys, I absolutely love you so much. Thanks for being here. I will see my staffing preneurs, not this Wednesday coming in, but the following Wednesday for our next Q&A call. And, um, and I will see um, my Houstontonians in Houston next week. I'll keep you guys posted on the schedule. And then I'll see my boot campers in Dallas the week after, my boot campers in D.C. the week after that. And then hopefully I can take somewhat of a rest. Is that allowed, staffingpreneurs? I love you guys. Have an absolutely amazing night. Please do amazing in your businesses. You all are awesome. You rock positive energy let's keep our focus on what we desire not what we don't desire i love you guys have a great night bye all right guys thank you so much for being here i just ended my call with my staffing preneurs i know i have a lot of energy um y'all just bear with me my goal and my desire is in to empower to inspire Buyer. Oh, Deshawn, Joint Commission. She was a no-show. She got sick with the flu. I reached back out to her. Never heard back from her. I do not chase people down. I will reach back out to her if it um, and to see if she decides, but I don't chase people down. As a matter of fact, I seem to have a string of, I don't want to say bad luck, but I've had people reach out to me and say, D, I want to get on your academy and talk to people live. And then when the time comes, they, somebody dies or they, they, they just, I don't know. So I'm just going with the flow. I'm going to continue to support you guys. Um, you know, I do know for a fact that the young lady who is coming to the boot camp, the um, YouTube consultant will definitely be there. And um, to be honest with you, um, and this is kind of personal, I'm on Facebook. I feel that a lot of... Um, consultants or a lot of people that say that they want to partner or that they want to come on live that they don't have their stuff together all the time and sometimes I like to give people opportunities I want to give people opportunities to grow their business and to show who they are but um, I, I am together for the most part and just sometimes everybody else is not in that space so, I, you know, I, I maybe I need to reach out to people who are already together, but I don't want to stop giving people an opportunity because somebody gave me an opportunity at one point and you guys are giving me an opportunity. So um, I like to work with people who are new and need the business and are looking for the business, but have experience in their industry. I just haven't found a string of success with that just yet, but I don't give up too easily. So I'm going to keep going. You'll hear me keep saying we're We'll bring more people on and at some point people will um, dive in and, and do exactly what they say and uh, we'll be able to grow our communities um, our business community all of the community we'll be able to grow, grow this economy in a very efficient type of way so I just wanted to throw that out there um, I do not do seminars on registering as a minority business women owned and registering for federal bids although I have had a couple of people on this training reach out and say they have someone who may be interested. I would suggest that you go to WeBank um, because that's where a lot of the ac activity is there um, under that topic. If I do get someone online, actually I'll put it out there. D, you've got to be a member of Staffing Preneurs Academy to even get access to those trainings. So if you haven't signed up, please do because I only do one live call a month for the whole world to see. Um, typically, um, it is closed only within my Staffing Preneurs Academy group. And, um, and you know, it's, it's just for my staffingpreneurs. But I like to 
Let the world see what I am offering or see the energy that I'm putting out there to help inspire people and to grow people out of their comfort zones and to starting their own niche staffing agency business, which is why I open it up once a month um, for everyone to kind of chime in and to... Um, and to see what we're doing. I apologize to see what we're doing. My phone was going dead. Um, Tree said, I love your internal enthusiasm, your inspiration. Well, the thing that I've learned, and I was just telling somebody this last night, is just because something doesn't work doesn't mean that you should give up on it and or lose your passion around it. I mean, that's absolutely crazy. It's, it just didn't work. You've got to find what works, right? And we talk about Colonel Sanders. He sent his recipe out there a hundred thousand times before somebody decided his recipe was worth actually doing. If Colonel Sanders gave up after two or three times, you guys would not have that poison. I say that. Ooh, did I say that? Ooh. Okay. Be careful because that chicken is whatever. So anyway, <laughs> be careful. But you would not have KFC. Let's put it like that. So, you know, I want you to just, you've got to just, if things don't work, keep working on it. That's why I was really, really, really disappointed with a lot of the staffingpreneurs that quit the, um, that quit the splits board. I felt like those are quitters. And I'm just going to come out and say, I don't care if I hurt somebody's feelings. If you quit that splits board in the first three months, a quitter. Because you can't, it takes time for things to work. It takes time to get a rhythm. And, you know, people go out and say, oh, I can go and do it on our own. But a lot of those people who quit the splits board, they still haven't made their first placement just yet. Right? Okay? Hello? I'm just keeping it real. All right? I know I stepped on some people's toes. I say it with love. But, you know, you've got to just keep moving on. Do you know how many times I wanted to get rid of the splits board because it wasn't making any money initially? You know? But now, but I kept going. Amanda forced me. <laughs> But I kept it going and now we're bringing in money. So making placements and the people all over the place are asking about the splits board. So, you know, you've got to keep going. If it doesn't work, who cares? Keep going until it doesn't make sense anymore. Now, one thing I will say, if it doesn't work a certain way initially, keep trying different ways of making it work, different ideas of making it work. But don't give up. You don't give up, okay? You just got to keep going. And, and that's how you become successful. All the entertainers that you see out there, they have been turned down for jobs, acting gigs, music gigs over their lifetime a 100,000 times. But they are now famous because they did not give up. So, you know, you can learn a lot from them from that perspective. Our split sport is, um, well, you're asking, you don't want to ask me because I'm going to be biased. I'm, and I'm not going to be, I'm going to tell you my split sport is the best split sport on this planet. So what I encourage you to do is to reach out to some of the other staffingpreneurs and ask them how they feel about the split sport and how value it is. What I will tell you is that we have over 500 jobs available on the split sport. We, um, if you email admin at staffingpreneurs splits and tell them that you're interested in signing up, what type of positions are there or tell them what your niche is. That's a better way about going about it. They can tell you whether or not some of those jobs are on the splits board to see if it's worth your time. Um, I'll tell you, we have about eight positions right now that will close tomorrow with the right candidates. RNs, um, medical directors, and, um, and in a couple of other, I think some loan originators. So a couple of those positions. So, um, I just, I just did, um, and so she says, I did, they love it. I just signed up. I just want to hear from, from the house. <laughs> Honey, I ain't going to never tell you something that I created is crappy because I put a lot of love and energy in everything that I do. Everything. Y'all, this passion is not just about recruiting and staffing. I'm a ball of fire all day, every day. I don't know how my children deal with me or my dog. <laughs> Because this is who I am typically 24 hours a day. All right. Um, fingers crossed, Deshaun. We'll see. Maybe we need to get like some type of petition out there saying we want you. Come, 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 right? Um, all right. So, okay, that's good. We had a great, a great session tonight. I love each and every one of you.